Welcome to your video on rate of change. Rate of change follows our lessons on slope because the two ideas are very closely related. We're going to start today's lesson with some vocabulary words. And the first two terms, independent variable and dependent variable, are going to be new, but they're actually ideas that we've been working with for the past few weeks. An independent variable is what we refer to as the quantity on the horizontal axis. So as you think about your graphs, the horizontal axis is the x-axis. And we use the x-axis or we use the x quantity to predict what is going to be on the vertical axis. And that's where the, in, or the dependent variable comes in. So here, the quantity on the vertical axis, the vertical axis for us is the y-axis. And the way that we have been using independent and dependent variables is when we have a table of values. So if we have the equation y equals 2x, and we make a table in order to sketch the graph of that line, we have always been selecting values for x. So that is our independent variable. You are free to choose whatever values you want for x. Our go-to values were negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. But there were times when other choices were more appropriate, particularly when we had fractions. But once you select your independent variable, and like I said, those can be any numbers that you want, your dependent variable is set. In fact, it's just that. It depends on what we chose for x. So for example, when x is negative 2, when I substitute that into the equation, y is negative 4. But I couldn't get that negative 4 value until I knew what my independent value was. When I substitute a negative 1 into the equation, we get negative 2. When I plug in a 0, I get 0. And then again, when I substitute in 1 and 2, we're going to get 2 and 4. But none of those values in green could be determined unless I knew the value of the independent variable. So in other words, I use x to find y. We'll work more on this in the days to come. When we talk about rate of change, which is the whole intent of this lesson, what we're really referring to is slope. But you'll notice I've added something there. It is slope with units. So units are basically just your labels. It could be miles per hour, feet per second, something like that. And then speed. I know you're familiar with speed. Speed is another representation for slope, but we kind of ignore all the negatives. We know that if you're traveling in your car and your speedometer says five miles per hour, you're going five miles per hour. Well, if you're going backwards, you're still going five miles per hour. So your speed just tells you how fast something's going, but we just ignore all negatives. Let's look at a few examples. Our first example reads, in 2009, Danny was 136 centimeters tall. He grew to be 176 centimeters by the year 2016. Find the rate of change in Danny's height. So rate of change is our slope. And we, of course, are going to incorporate our units. And here's where our quantities come in. We have two quantities. We've got time measured in years, and we've got height. And so you kind of have to think about which quantity depends on the other. Does the year that it is depend on how tall Danny is? Or does how tall Danny is depend on what year it is? And so you may have to pause and rewind so you can hear those statements again. But it makes sense that our independent variable is the year. And the dependent variable is the height. And that height is measured in centimeters because Danny's height is going to depend on what year it is. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to come up with ordered pairs. So I am told that in 2009, Danny was 136 centimeters. And then I knew that in 2016, he was 176 centimeters. So I've used two different colors because those are the values that belong together. And then I just have to make sure that they're in the correct order. 
and the independent variable is x, the dependent variable is y. And so we've determined that our x coordinate is going to be the year. So my first order pair is going to come from what I circled in red. The year is 2009 and the height is 136. So that's my first order pair. The second order pair is going to come from what I circled in black. And you have to be careful, don't just take the order that they appear in the problem. Make sure you think about the independent and dependent variable. The year is the independent, so that goes first. And the height is the dependent, so that has to go second. Once you have your two order pairs, it should seem like a familiar process to figure out the rate of change, which, like I said, is just slope. I'm going to encourage you to label your points, just like we did in the past so that you can get those substituted into the slope equation in the correct order. So slope we know is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so I've pulled those right off of the ordered pairs. When we simplify, in the numerator we have 40, and in the denominator we have 7. And in the past, this is where we stopped. But if I said to you that Danny grew 40 sevenths of a centimeter every year, to me that doesn't have much meaning. So when we're talking about rate of change, we're actually going to encourage you to divide out your rate into just one number or into that unit rate. So when we take 40 divided by 7, we get 5.7. And notice that your units in the numerator were centimeters and the units in the denominator was year. And so our overall label here is 5.7 centimeters per year. And that just makes a little bit more sense. I can visualize that. So Danny grew 5.7 centimeters per year during that time period in his life. Our second example is similar. As a machine that originally cost $15,600 has a value of $2,800 after eight years. Find the rate of change. So again, rate of change just means slope. We're going to need to come up with some ordered pairs. So again, we have to say, um, does the year determine the cost of the machine or does the cost of the machine determine the year? And I think Again, you may have to rewind and listen to that, but the independent variable is going to be the year because it's, it matters what year it is in order for us to figure out what the value of the machine is. So independent is X, dependent is Y. And unlike the last problem, we're not given numerical values for the year. We are just told that originally the machine was $15,600. So I'm going to say originally is year zero. So when the machine was brand new, it wasn't even a year old, it was zero. So year zero, the value of the machine was 15600 The second order pair um, is going to come from the 2800 after eight years. So again, you have to be careful with the order. Years is the independent variable, so that has to be x. And then the value is the dependent variable, so that has to be y. Once you have your order pairs, you're going to label them. So x1, y1, x2, y2. And then you're going to use your slope formula once again. So we're going to do y2 minus y1. over x2 minus x1. In the numerator, we end up with a negative 12,800. And in the denominator, we have a positive 8. We're again going to divide this out just so that we can make sense of our answer. And we get a negative 1,600, which should make sense because the value of the machine is going down decreasing, so we should have a negative slope. And then our label on this, if you think back to the units in each of the numerator and the denominator, this was in dollars and this was in years. 
So our label on our answer will be dollars. I'm going to sneak that in before per year. And the negative is okay because, like I said before, the value was going down. So it went down by $1,600 per year. Our next example, we have a table. You could kind of think of this as a table of values, even though it's going in the horizontal direction and we're used to seeing them in the vertical direction. And what I did here is I looked up the average ticket price for movies in theaters in the United States. And the range that they had available was from 2010 to 2016. And so what this question is asking us to find is the average rate of change from 2010 to 2016. And if you look at the table, the table, even though the year goes up by one every single time, the price doesn't go up by the same amount. It goes up by a, like three cents, four cents, maybe more than that. There's not a consistent change every time, which is why we're gonna look at the average rate of change over the entire time period. So we're going to circle the price in 2010 and 2016, and then those are the only points that I'm really gonna be concerned about. When information is set up in a table, the top is usually the independent. And again, time or the year is usually gonna be your independent. So that's gonna be our X, and then the price, how much a movie costs, is going to depend on what year it is. So if we form our ordered pairs, our first one is gonna be 2010 and then 789. And our second one is going to be 2016 and then 865. Once we've established our ordered pairs, again, I'm gonna encourage you to label them. Just helps alleviate any mistakes that might be made when you're using your slope formula. And rate of change is just another way for slope. So it's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. When we calculate the numerator, we get 76 cents. And when we calculate the denominator, we get six. Again, we wanna divide that out. And if you use your calculator, you'll determine that our rate of change is 0.13. Thinking about units, our numerator was measured in dollars and our denominator was measured in years. So the answer will have those same labels. So it's 13 cents because of that decimal place per year. So on average, the ticket price for movies has gone up 13 cents per year from 2010 to 2016. Our final example, we are going to be looking at rate of change from a graph. So the graph that you see here represents the distance traveled by a family last weekend. So when we look for rate of change, again, we're just looking for slope with units. And I think in a graph, we have to be very, very careful. So we talked about when we find slope from a graph, we have to locate two nice points. So zero, zero, if it's there, is always a good one to pick. And then I'm gonna go ahead right over here and mark that. Now, don't actually, put your pens down for a moment. I don't actually want you to write this because this is a common mistake. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what students will do. They will say that the slope is two over four. Okay, seems reasonable, right? Up two over four, that's two fourths, which is one half. And when we think about units, we went in the y direction first and that's miles. So this would be measured in miles. And then the x direction was hours. So you're telling me that this family went on a trip together and they were traveling a half of a mile per hour. And I'm gonna say you could probably walk fast. Well, you could walk faster. You might even be able to crawl faster than a half of a mile per hour. So that just doesn't even make sense. 
So hopefully you were listening and not writing. So I'm going to erase all of that because we don't want to make that mistake. We want to pay special attention to the units of our graph. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those two points again. And when I do the rise, I'm going up two boxes, but I actually went up 50. So my rate of change, the numerator is going to give me 50. And then I'm going over four boxes, but I have to look at the scale. And I'm actually just going over one hour. So I'm going to write those units right in there. 50 miles is what I went up, and one hour is what I went over. And I happen to pick really nice points because I'm done. The rate of change was 50 miles per hour. The next part of this problem asks us to explain what the slope represents in the context of the problem. Well, the rate of change was 50 miles per hour. That's just the speed the family traveled. I know this really isn't a complete sentence, but we're going to go with it. The speed that the family traveled. That's what the slope represented. So slope and speed are connected. And then the last part asks us how far, circle that, how far did the family travel in 2.5 hours? So what distance did we make it in 2.5 hours? So really, we're, we can just look at the graph here and then figure out the point on the line because the line represents how far the, the family went over a certain amount of time. So we look at our scale and we notice that 2.5 is right here. So this is our independent variable. We're going to go, we know 2.5 and then we're going to go up to the line and our dependent variable is the distance. So I go across here, and I notice that's the distance, which isn't labeled, but that's okay because it's halfway between 100 and 150, which tells me that the family went 125 miles. So the big takeaway from today is that rate of change is the same as slope, but you have to incorporate units. And then I would really like you to work on that vocabulary for independent and dependent variables and just kind of work on that connection. This concludes your video for rate of change.